Okay, Junior Roberts here again with real juniorroberts.com. We're on to question four of our CSEC January 2016 past paper. We're actually doing a set of videos just revisiting that entire paper. So again, we're on question four. I've done questions one, two, and three in previous video. A uh, link to that playlist will be posted below in comments and in the description. So you can go over and check out questions one, two, and three. So let's get going with question four. Okay, so question four, uh, part A, uh, part A, I, uh, says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. This is one of the laws of reflection and we're asked in this question to state the other law. So the law which they want us to state is that the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection and the normal all lie on the same plane. So I'm just going to write that in quickly. So we're going to say that the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection, and the normal all lie on the same plane. on the same plane, right? So what we're saying is that, let us say we have a mirror here. I'm just going to draw a sketch. So let us say this is our mirror, right? For instance, we will have a normal, right, in this plane, and then we will have our angle of incidence, right, and our angle of reflection. So. So angle of reflection and also angle of incidence. So what we're saying is that uh, these two laws, the first one says that this angle is equal to this angle, and this angle, this angle, and the normal all lie on the same plane. So those are our two laws of reflection. So let's move on to the next part in the question. Okay, so this question here says we are to state three properties of an image are of the image in a plane mirror. So first thing we're going to say is that the image is virtual. All right, so the image in a plane mirror is virtual. Next thing we're going to say is that the image is laterally, laterally inverted. All right? which means that the left side becomes the right and the right side becomes the left. And the third thing we're going to see is that the image is same size as object, as the object. Alright? So those are our three properties of the image found by a plane mirror. Alright, so here we have a figure. And the question says, figure three shows a car located five meters behind a truck, which is eight meters long. Assume the external mirror for the truck is a plane mirror and it is in line with the front of the truck. All right, so to take this question, here we have our mirror. All right, this is our mirror right here. And then we have our truck, which they said that is five meters behind the truck and the truck has a length of eight meters. Now, question wants us to first calculate the image distance of the car as seen by the truck driver. Now, an interesting thing about the image in a plane mirror is that it is the same distance away from the mirror as the object is from the mirror. So first, we're going to actually determine the object distance in reference to this mirror. So if we look back at our diagram, we have a truck that is 8 meters long and the car is 5 meters behind the truck. So if we add those two distances, so we can say object distance, object distance 
is equal to 8 meters, which is the length of the truck, plus 5 meters, which is how far the car is behind the truck. So when I add these, we'll get 13 meters. And again, as we said before, the object distance is equal to the dis object distance is equal to the image distance. Right? And the object distance again is 13 meters. So therefore, our image distance would be equal to 13 meters. Alright, so we're going to continue on. Now, here we have part 2 in section B, or part 2 of part B, wants us to state a reason why the sign shown below is more likely to be posted at the back of a truck rather than a car. Alright, so typically we know a truck, let us say this is a truck, Right, this is a truck, and this is the front part of the truck. Right, and then we have our wheels, for instance, and we have another wheel. Now, this sign possibly would be at the back of this truck, and if we look at this truck, uh, due to the length of this truck, it becomes very difficult for the driver of the truck to actually see images inside his mirror. So, we can say that the length. of the truck makes it very difficult for the driver to see distance distant objects in is rear view in, in his rear view mirror mirror all right so we're going to move on so part c says a ray of light passes through a block of material as shown in figure five now the question says if the refractive index of the material is 1.3 calculate the angle of refraction in the material given that the angle of incidence is 30 degrees all right so to do this we're going to consider the uh, law of refraction right or we can actually say snell's law right and snell's law says that if we take the sine of the angle of incidence and we divide it by the sine of the angle of refraction we will get a constant right and that constant is actually called the refractive index so we can write then that our refractive index n right is equal to the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction All right now in this case we are given n which is angle of which is the refractive index as 1.3 and we are given the angle of incidence i as 30 degrees now to use this equation well we can actually use this equation to find the angle of refraction right so we will have to transpose this equation when we transpose this we're going to get that sine r which is sine angle of refraction is equal to the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the refractive index which is n all right so now we can simply uh, start to plug in our values right so sine i is simply sine the angle of incidence which is 30 right divided by our refractive index which is 1.3 right for this well we know that sine 30 is 0 0.5 so we'll have 0 0.5 divided by 1.3 and for this we can simply pull on the services of our calculator so taking our calculator we will say 0 0.5 divided by 1.3 right and we will get that sine r is equal to 0 0.385 now since we're actually interested in finding r 
and we have sine r here, what we'll have to do is to take the inverse sine of both sides. So when we take the inverse sine of this, so let me just, so if we say sine inverse, right, of that, we're going to sine inverse here as well. Right, and when we do that, what we'll end up with is, we'll end up that the refractive index r is equal to the inverse sine of this. So what we can do is just say shift sine 0 0.385. And when we do that, we get that our refractive index is 22.6 degrees. All right, so that's our answer right there. Now let's continue on. So the question here says that if the refractive index of the material increased, why would the lateral displacement of the ray also increase? Now this is because, is because as the refractive index, index, increases the optical density density of the material increases and therefore further reduces the speed of the uh, speed speed of the incident incident ray right and therefore it will uh, refract more so incident incidental what we're saying is that if we have our material right and we increase the optical density right so uh, light is not able to pass through it that easily Right, and we have our normal here. When our ray, well, our normal will go like this. When our ray strikes like that, right, what, what will happen is that this ray will start to bend toward the normal, right, a lot more because it's going to be slowed down by the particles that are actually slowing down the, the wave as it actually passes through. So that's our answer for that question. So we're going to move on again. All right now, actually, that's our that's the final part in the question. So, there we have it. Uh, this is question four of the CSEC January 2016 past paper. All right, if there's any question about what we have covered in this video, please post them below in comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell notification so you will never miss another video. Thank you for watching.